Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We're going to be talking with Leslie Curtis, who's Director of Business Development at Regents Park of Boca Raton. You have heard her many times, and I have heard her many times, and she has a, a wealth of information. She has been in the healthcare business long before people even knew what she does. It, I mean, she was always helping people, and she was always helping them get into, well, whether it was rehab centers or nursing homes, or she was a nurse just at hospitals. So I thought today we'd have a little fun, and I'm I'm starting to deal with a lot of authors. So Leslie and I are going to talk about if she were to write a book, what would the book be about? So Leslie, think about that. Yes. You probably don't even have to have a title, but what would your book be about? God, um, there's so many things, Anita, in, just... in this industry. I I I guess. Partly compassion. That's good. Um, because, you know, there are people in every profession that probably shouldn't be there. And um, when you're dealing with people that are sick or ill, compassion is really important. Um, sense of humor. You know, try to get people's spirits up. Um, I mean, this is beyond just the medical stuff that we, we deal with, which is increasing, you know, as hospital stays decrease. But um, I think that it's so important for whether it's home health or, or, you know, what we do is to be able to take time with our patients or residents, understand or try to understand what they're going through, and help them deal with it because sometimes it's very difficult especially when they you know they live here and they don't have family that's you know close by so that would be one of the topics that are one of the chapters um that sounds good you know because it's so important um and you know you've dealt with healthcare professionals i've certainly dealt with them over the past year a lot more than i would like to and that is so important. Um, professionalism, which is important. You know, you type in anytime you want, but you no, know. No, I it understand. Is I know. I like what you're saying. I'm just listening because you're you're hitting all the right topics. But um, and people don't probably know a lot of this. So I thought coming from the professionalism that you have and seeing it from looking into it, in a sense, or out of it, uh, what would the book have? So we already have the first chapter about compassion, the second that we want to deal with professionals, people who are in this with the right reasons and are getting the best training. How about the residents? What I think that could be funny. I could think that could be your funny chapter. Yeah, the residents, you know, it is funny. I mean, at a I would say the short-term residents, which you don't get to know as well, and the long-term residents that you do get to know better. You know, um, I can tell you a little story. We had a little lady come with her daughter to move here from someplace in Miami because the daughter lives around here. And she was so cute, the the resident, um, all dialed up with the makeup and the lipstick and everything else. And I, I walked... <laughs> And I said, we have got to find a bed for her. I'm in love with her. <laughs> and I still am. You know, I, I mean, I guess it's probably not professional. Go hug somebody and, you know, and all that. But it's one of those things that you do because you just fall in love with them. Um, so that would be an, another thing that, you know, it, it to get to know them. And sometimes they're cranky you know which so are we so it makes sense that they would you know if they don't feel good they're a little cranky and you try again you try to you know have a sense of humor with them try to calm their nerves or or whatever um but the long-term residents are a much it sounds funny a bigger challenge sometimes than the short-term residents because they leave you know they know they're going home it's the ones that live here that can get, 
you know, down in the dumps or, uh, you know, things like that. And, and, I, and I've gotten to know a lot of them so much better than, you know, at, at any other place that I work because there's a lot of them here. I mean, we have 180 beds and 120, about 120 are devoted to long-term residents. I didn't realize that. 120 beds. And is, are those private rooms or are there, there are two people in no, those rooms? Yeah, most of them are semi-private because most people that come in here uh, for long-term care, even if they come in private pay, they end up converting to Medicaid. So, you know, they don't have the money to pay for the private room unless the family wants to. Um, so most of them are semi-private rooms, and then that's always the challenge is finding two people that <laughs> will like each other. You know? I'd say that is true. Yeah, because they're usually in their 80s or, you know, sometimes a little younger but and sometimes a little older. I think my latest or um, my oldest resident was 105. You know, because they live longer when they're here because they have 24-hour care. So they do well. Yeah, you know, when you think about that, and you said it so well, they don't have their families here, and if they do, they're, they can't be there all the time, and they don't get to make a lot of their decisions anymore. Once they're there, there's a routine, right? Right. And you try to accommodate, you know, certain routines. Somebody that likes to sleep late, um, not that many, but, you know, you try to accommodate. So that might be the last patient you go to in the morning to wake up and get ready for breakfast and things like that. Um, but you do try to accommodate their needs because everybody's got special needs, you know, um, and they'll let you know, believe me, you know, if they're unhappy about something. And, and when you I mean, think, of, be... when you think about it, excuse me, Leslie, you know that they're not going home anywhere. That's it. This is their home. Right. So right. I suppose that. They have to adjust to that. That's probably the biggest thing, isn't it? The adjustment period. Yeah, it really is. Um, and sometimes, you know, there'll be a short-term rehab patient that cannot go home. You know, they don't have the resources for 24-hour care in their home. So they end up coming, you know, staying here. And this is their home. And you have to really, and that's another thing with training staff, to remind them this is where you work but this is their home you know mm. and trying to accommodate their needs above your own you know yes we all like schedules when we give our you know morning pills at nine o'clock or eight thirty you know all those things that you know the medical profession likes to do but you have to try and accommodate them the best you can because they live here is, you know well, I yeah. was thinking if you write this book someday, you have to really maybe have some of the residents be your co-authors because they'd know what they want you to say. <laughs> That's right. And there are a lot. You know, people think that everybody that lives in a nursing home is confused and disoriented. They're not. You know, um, a lot of them are very, very with it. You see them out, well, not, not today, of course, but... You see them outside reading their books. You know, it's it, it's they read more than I do. Um, they really are amazing. You know, um, and th- and they'll tell you, you know, this is a great day. We had a great meal, um, or you know, whatever they serve for lunch they didn't like, and they'll let you know about that too. And of course, I go trouncing down to the director of. Um, food service and say, you know, they really didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that anymore. Yeah, but um, do that. so, but they do get a choice of things anyway. Yeah, they do. There's usually two to three choices that they can have. Right. But haven't you ever, you know, you're in your, you're in your house and you know you want something to snack on or eat. And how many times can you open the refrigerator like there's going to be something new there? Yeah, right. You know? Same old, same old. You know, I don't want that. But I, and they, they can't do that. So you really, you know, we have two full-time dietitians that, you know, work with them to try and accommodate what they like. Um, and we have a big, big dining room for our long-term residents where 
you know, they're seated at certain tables because you want to seat them with people that they like, you know, and sometimes it's not so easy. Um, but, you know, so they do have choices. And we have special breakfast a couple times a month and, you know, dinners and things like that. But it, it's still not, you know, it's, it is their home. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard for them sometimes. But the one thing that you do have, which they couldn't have at their own home, are the activities. Oh, my gosh, right. you have so many activities. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, and they love the activities. You know, we have, um, which I think is is important. It really is to keep their spirits up. We have um, live entertainment three times a week. Got the bingo, pochino, um, you know, all those different things that they can do. And then we have, you know, the kids come in from different schools and, there's one band from, I'm not sure what school it is, but they come in and they play, you know, the band plays for the residents. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that go on here. There's there's activities almost all day long every day. Yep, I know so. that. That's really true. And and the nice thing, and I just want everyone to know, again, I want to have to go back to this. I'm talking with Leslie Curtis. She's um, director of the... Business, well, she's director of business development, Regents Park of Boca Raton. And if you would like a tour, you want to know more about this, you want to help her write a book, let me give you a a number to call. It's 561-483-9282, 483-9282. And you can go online to regentsparkboca.com. And you can see a lot of the things we're talking about on her, her website, because we do put a lot of the, uh, the, the YouTubes when Leslie's been on so many times and we talk about a lot of different things, but I've been dealing with a lot of authors lately and I just thought, wow, you have so much food for thought because yeah. of the place that you work. I think the other thing I might think about, you know, inserting is, you know, when people come here for a tour and not, I mean, certainly for short-term rehab, that's important. You show them around. But when they're coming in and they don't have an a clue, the family, about long-term care or what it entails or what it costs and how do they do it and do they need to get attorneys, you know, to help them with the Medicaid applications and mm-hmm. all those things that happen. And I will tell you a lot of times, you know, their loved one is in the hospital and it's become apparent that they, they're not going to go home. Probably, you know, so they're, they're looking and, you know, they come in and they're, they're in crisis. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. And if they go to a facility that doesn't take the time to sit and talk to them, you know, it makes their, their journey, um, even worse. And it is a journey for them. You know, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing. That might be the name of the book, the journey, That's true. <laughs> the long road ahead, right? Right, because it is. It is a journey for the family and the, and the residents. You know, families feel guilty, um, but, you know, if they can't take care of them, they can't take care of them. But um, do you have um, a lot of families who do spend time with their loved ones? They take them out on the weekend, or they, they are there more than not? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, and, you know, it, it really varies. I mean, there's families that fly in, you know, like maybe every other month and spend time with them because they live elsewhere. Um, there's people that live here, and those are the ones that are in a lot more. And they will take them out to eat. You know, and again, it depends on the resident's ability to transfer into a car, do, you know, different things. But they mm-hmm. will take them out um, shopping, you know, whatever they want, you know, um, Leslie, I spent a lot the, of time with them here. Right. The nice thing about your location, though, is it's so close to the mall. It's so close yeah. to restaurants. It's close to the movies. They can really take them without, you know, spending maybe as a mile or two and have a right. lot of fun. It is. And they, you know, most places nowadays are handicap accessible. So even if they're in a wheelchair, which, you know, a lot of them are. Um, they can they can get up and go about, you know, um, and enjoy themselves. 
So so maybe the, uh, the next chapter or the other chapter is romance. I know that you've had people there who have either become buddies with one another, whether it's two women, two men, they have now friends, or they actually have become lovers. Um, yeah, I haven't seen that in a little while, but yes, it does happen. And not often, but occasionally, we have husband and wife teams that um, are both in here. And they both and need it, to be there? or I mean, yeah, they, Really? No. Hmm. Yeah, they both need to be here. I mean, most times what happens is one of them will be in here for long-term care and the other one is still at home and then they decline and they end up coming in Mm. for long-term care. So that does happen. Um, And, of course, you know, you see the traumatic um, injuries from, like, motor vehicle accidents where they're both injured and they both come in. Um, for short-term rehab, and with any luck, we get them home, you know, depending on the seriousness of their injuries. Can you have younger people staying there, too? I mean, if they can't go home? Do you have people in their 30s, 40s, 50s? I mean, can, it, your, your your facility is not does not bar them from being there. No. Uh, we rarely see people in their 30s, 40s maybe for short-term rehab, um, but we have some long-term people in their 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. um, you know, with a debilitating disease that prohibits them from living in their home by themselves. Right. That's what I was thinking about, that that, that could happen. So it's not age-specific. It just most of, of course, would be people on Medicare. But but there are some times when someone has no other way, and that's they don't have a family here or the family doesn't want them to stay in their home, and you wind up being that caregiver. Right. Well, you know, you always want to send people to their highest level of functioning. But if that's not possible, then, yeah, if they needed long-term care, we would accommodate that if we had, you know, the availability. So some, summing all this up is you have at, at, at Regents Park of Boca Raton, you actually have – a place where people, if they've had all sorts of injuries, can come and get two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it takes to get themselves back on their feet and go home. Then right. you have the long-term care where people will live there probably for the rest of their life, maybe in some circumstances, who knows, they might even get better or more, you know, and now with all the science going on, maybe they go in for one thing and they think that's what they're going to have to say, and all of a sudden, wow, there's a new drug that you can take, and look how they they got so much better they can go home. Right. And you do see progression on a long-term unit with, with some people. They may not go home, but they certainly have, you know, a higher quality of life because they can do more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, you know, because they live here and we see them every day, if we notice a decline in function on a long-term resident, rehab will come in and evaluate and see if they would benefit from a little bit of physical therapy or occupational therapy um, or or even speech therapy. You know, say they're losing a little bit of weight. Well, is it because they're dep- then, then you got to play sleuth. Is it because they're depressed? Is it because they're having a swallowing issue? You know, there's a lot of reasons people can stop eating as much so you know we can we can manage all those things right here and who's in charge of noticing all that um the people that pick it up first would be nursing because you know they're taking care of them every single day and then they would request um therapy to evaluate get a doctor's order of course and request an evaluation and a lot of times they do pick them up, or they may just, um, you know, be having issues in their wheelchair with um, sitting upright properly. And then therapy will come and look at, you know, why are they having problems in their wheelchair? And it might be that they need some bolsters on the sides mm-hmm. or, you know, different things that you can do to make them more comfortable. So 
well, we covered. Yeah, we've covered a lot of things here. I, I think that, um, I think we've probably missed a few things. I would like to know about what do they wear when they're there? Do they have to stay in a, ca- a, a hospital gown, or can they get dressed up even if they're sitting in their room? No, we want them dressed every day, dressed and out of bed. Hmm. Uh, because if they're not getting out of bed, there's a reason. You know, especially if they're long-term residents. They don't want to get out of bed. Again, now you start to look at why. Is there a pain issue going on? Is there, you know, a a depression? You know, again, you play sleuth and why don't you want to get up? Well, they're probably not going to tell you why. So you have to try, you know, different methods to get them motivated to get out of bed. Hmm. Nobody should stay in bed all day, you know. And I have also seen where you've had talent contests with them. I've seen where you actually take a lot of the people, they play piano, they dance, they do di- different things. So I don't want people to listening to this show thinking, oh, everybody's in a wheelchair. No, no. They, there's a lot of different things. They, they have a talent show where the employees and, and the residents get together and um, do different things. It's pretty interesting. Um because you do, like I said, you, you bond with the residents. You know, you, you get to know them so well that, um, you know, you can, you can do things like that. And they do, most of them do participate, if, you know, and get involved in, in different things. Right. So you, over the years, have made lots of friendships. I guess the worst part of this book that you may write is when you have to say goodbye to them. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and it's always sad. But actually, you know? if they had not had you and your friendship and your love, just like I think about my dog, if something happens, you can take two ways to look at it. There, because I was there, they had a nice life. Had I not been there, who knows what would have happened. Right. No, you're right. You know, um, you know, it's, it's like the old thing of nursing. How can you do that? Well, because I know I'm going to make somebody's day better, you know, because that's what we do. So, yeah, I mean, it's. And it depends on why they're, I mean, if they're leaving because they're moving up north with their kids, that's great. Right. But if they're leaving for other reasons, it's always um, kind of traumatic for us. You know, especially, like I say, you know, you you get to know these people so well and you, you know, you really care about them. You know, right. or their family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's very important that you said that, that. They ha- you see, we for so long, people would say, I don't ever want to go to a nursing home. You know, you've written about that. Why do I don't want to go to a nursing home? That's the last thing. Well, of course. I mean, no one wants to go anywhere where there's an institution. If you can stay in your home, everyone wants that. But after listening to you, if they do have to go to where they're being taken care of, then they have to decide which one is the best one for them. And what kind right. of care are they going to get there? Just like what you've been saying, compassion and caring for these people, then that's a good thing. Right. Right. And, you know, it's, you know, you walk down the hallways, there's two um, nursing units that are for long term care. If you're walking down the hallway and you see a resident that needs some help, then you help them, you know. And if you need more help than you, <laughs> Then you wheel them or bring them to the nurses' station and say, "I need some help," um, and they're always obviously willing to stop what they're doing and and help. So, you know, it's it's a team effort. Period. But because you get to know these people so well, it makes a big difference. It's a- you know, you know, they're they're they're. Um, personalities you know how they normally act if they're off a little bit then you know you you notify nursing because maybe there's something going on um you know medically that's kind of having a you know a negative consequence for the patient so it you know 
it's a team effort, no matter how you look at it. And then, like I said, like you said, you know, the activities are very important to um, to them. They love the activities. I know they do. They wait. They also love their meals. I've always noticed, what, you know, and, and I've said this before, the reason meals are important is because that's how a day gets differentiated. Morning, right. lunch, dinner. They know then what time it is, right? Right, right. And I don't know how some of them know what time it is, but I'll tell you, especially for, well, lunch and dinner. Boy, they line up waiting to get into <laughs> that um, dining room, you know. And it's, it, you're right, it's very important to them. That's why the food is so important. And you have good food there, and I have to say that. Oh, my heavens, your food there is, is um, you know, it's not Epicurean, but it's certainly very good. And that's what right. they... You know, and they can, and a lot of them have lost their taste buds, and a lot of people can't really chew things. But it's presented lovely, and even if they get something from it, um, it's better than opening cans of food at home or something like that. Right, right. It's not Chef Boyardee. Right. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, oh, I haven't heard that word for a long time. <laughs> yeah, grandchildren, you know, little ones. Right. Um, but. They get the same food as the short-term residents. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and obviously some of them are on special diets and, right. you know, things like that. So you, you still do the best you can, you know. Can't use salt, Mrs. Dash, or, you know, whatever right. you can use. Well, so, Leslie, you have just written your book and you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have, have to have it. notes, right? Yeah, right. You don't have to, you know, your sister's different. That's different. She wouldn't be writing about this anyway. She writes mysteries. But this right. is something very interesting to think about because you, you know, you know so much. But thank you, Leslie. This has been a wonderful interview. I'm so glad that you played my game. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. Take care of yourself. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.